Hey guys, Garrett from Tactical Repair back on the bench with you today. Um, I have got a 4 liter Jeep engine head that I'm going to tell you a little bit about today. Uh, what I'd like to go over is removal of the valves so you can change the valve stem seals. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, doing a I guess I'd call it a maintenance grind on them just to make sure they seat well in the head. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about port polishing on the head. Um, it's something you might as well do while you've got the head off. Uh, if you do it right, it can't hurt. If you do it really wrong, it really can hurt. Uh, but I'll show you a little bit about that. Uh, because I'm poor and I don't have sponsors, I've got the cheapest valve spring compressor you can buy. Uh, it's very simple, just works on leverage. Uh, there's another type that's almost like a big C-clamp. It goes under the head, holds the head of the valve, and pushes the valve spring down and lets you get the keepers out. Uh, this is the old school kind, and the way it works is you need uh, some bolt that fits in the uh, rocker arm stud area, and you put it on. You see this little hole here. It goes down over the valve stem itself, and when you push it down, it actually pushes the valve down um, sometimes you've got to move, uh, and with this head actually, I've been finding that you've got to do this on everyone. You've got to move the head a little bit off the bench. Ooh, my way. And when you push this down, you've got to take a soft hammer and tap on the valve just a little. Uh, you don't want to hit it hard because you don't want to bend the valve, but if you do bend the valve, uh, checking it later will uh, show it itself. That's all it takes right there. Just a little little smack and it sounded a lot harder than it was because it is a valve and a valve seat and etc etc now i've got to put it back because i can't get enough leverage i don't want to drop it off the bench damage the cast so push it down and i've shown you this before in uh hydraulic head videos they've got the same kind of keepers on them uh, Pull them out with a little magnet. Of course, that one's stuck. Once you get both keepers out, release it easy. The valve spring comes off. Now, I keep everything in order. Uh, here's my number one cylinder valve springs. And all I do is I take them off the head and I transfer them directly behind the head onto the bench. Do the same thing with the valves. Um, although you can't really get the intake and exhaust valves mixed up, you can uh, get this get them mixed up between cylinders if you just stick them all in one spot. So uh, you need to take the stud off the back side. If well, let me adjust this camera. If the particular four liter you're working on has uh, the alternator and compressor bracket stud on the passenger side. You'll need to remove it with a quarter inch ratchet and a E8 external Torx. You could probably get it out with some vice grips or something, risk damaging the stud. Uh, but whatever works for you. I'm not gonna tell you to go out and buy a Mac Tools set of E sockets if you don't want to or can't afford it. They're not cheap. Uh, but you can get cheaper versions, of course, at some of the auto parts stores. Now, you want to flip the head on its side and remove the valves like so. Mm. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but mm, where is the camera lens? Let's see. You see how pitted that is? Yeah, that's probably going to actually have to be ground, and that's that's why it's best to have the head off when you change the valve seals. You can do it on the vehicle, uh, but you don't get to actually look at the valve seals, the seats themselves. Uh, this one isn't nearly as bad. The intake valve is not pitted at all. It's got some. It's got some crusties on it, 
uh, but that's easily cleaned off. The exhaust valve is the only one that's got some damage, and I can, I can probably clean that up with some valve grinding compound. Now, this is what I was going to tell you about. The way you can do valves uh, as a little bit of maintenance when you've got it all apart is some valve grinding compound. Uh, what you can do is it, and it only takes a little bit of this, you put some valve grinding compound on the valve itself and you can put it back into the head where it goes and there's two ways you can do this. You can pull it through the head, very gently chuck this in a drill and pull on it gently while you spin it at a low RPM. And you'll want to spin it just a little bit at a time and then remove the valve, clean the compound off and check and see what your pattern is. You don't want to go too much um, because you'll ruin it. Uh, the other way you can do that is they make a suction cup type thing that you can stick to this side, the face of the valve, and spin with your hands, or you can also chuck it into a drill if you cut the end off of it. Uh, and they also make one that's meant to go in a drill. There uh, obviously is no replacement for having an actual valve job done on a machine, uh, but, you know, that's not always uh, prudent or affordable at the time. So, uh, uh, worth mentioning, since I'm here, I've got these out. Exhaust and intake. You notice, exhaust valve is always smaller than the intake. So, that's why I said you can't really get the two confused on the same cylinder. Uh, if you try to put the intake valve in the exhaust bore, uh, it's, it's quite evident that it's not going to fit. So, uh, with that aside, uh, back over. And these, these rocker bridges, these are the old ones. Uh, I'm not going to be reusing these. So, you know, I lifted this by this chain for these bridges and I'm using it to pry on it. It's, it doesn't matter if these bridges get damaged because I'm not going to be reusing these. Uh, keep that in mind you're doing this with your head, don't damage your bridges. Uh, now, the valve stem seals. Really easy to remove. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. And make sure you can see this. Yeah. You'll go just under the edge of it and work it. You want to turn the screwdriver side to side and work around it pops right up and on. Now, if you look closely at the valve stem seal, you've got a small, small spring that goes around the part that actually seals on the valve itself. Over time, that spring can lose tension, or this rubber will harden. Then the oil will get past this, and you end up smoking a lot, um, on, especially on startup, but um, it will make the vehicle use oil all the time. It just may not smoke all the time while it's running. So, um, to install it, you see I've got my full new set of valve stem seals up here out of my head gasket set. Um, you want to put a little bit of light oil on them. You can use the motor oil that you intend to run. It really doesn't matter. You can also use engine assembly lube and then slide it back down onto the valve guide itself. Um, while you've got this apart, you can insert your valve in through the top and just see how much slack you've got to tell you uh, if your valve guides need to be replaced or not. So it's not really a precision method of checking, but you know if your valve wobbles around in there, then you know the valve uh, guides need to be replaced as well. Um, and just to note while I'm here, Yes, the thermostat housing is still on there. That's just to make the head a little easier for me to handle. Uh, it will be coming off. I'm gonna get a new thermostat and a new gasket. Um, everything's gonna be done properly on this. So, um, when you re reinstall your valves, you wanna put a little bit of light oil on the stem itself and 
turn it as you're pushing it up through the new valve stem seals. You don't want to tear the new seal or knock the little spring off because they're a real pain to get back on there. Uh, so be careful with it. Don't force it. Um, the other thing I was telling you about earlier, port, there's, you've probably heard of porting and polishing as far as the performance market goes. Uh, it's an old school trick that almost everybody used to do. Um, so there's porting and polishing and there's port polishing. Porting and polishing means that you're actually opening up the diameter of these intake and exhaust ports in the head so that you can flow more air faster. Uh, usually what people do is they will lay a, a new gasket on here and they will match the ports uh, and size wise to the gasket and that's called port matching uh, or gasket port matching. I, people refer to it all kinds of ways but you, you're bound to have heard one of those terms. Um, the other way to do the same thing is uh, just port polishing where you're not trying to change the size or the shape of the ports but you're taking off the rough cast flashing and uh, just the roughness of the cast itself uh, you're a lot less likely to mess up something that way like uh, there are certain instances where if you change the size or the geometry of the port in a, an improper fashion you can actually hurt the flow of the head itself and make yourself worse off than you were before you did any of the work. Uh, so what I usually do is just polishing the ports and, and I do my best just to make uh, the inside of these runners smooth and uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt to grab the camera and show you what I mean here. Let's see if I can pull off the mount. If you look in here you can see that, and I'm not anywhere near finished, but you see how I'm smoothing out the rough graininess that is left in the casting uh, in the intake and the exhaust ports. I'm not trying to change the size of the ports, I'm just smoothing it out to make, the, make it more uh, easy for the air and the exhaust gases to flow um, with less turbulence. So uh, it may not add uh, you know, a ton of horsepower, but it will at least make it a little more efficient and as long as I've got the head off why not you just got to be careful not to screw it up and you'll notice that there are flashing marks here on the sides and, and in different heads they'll be in different spots but all you're trying to do is smooth out everything without taking off too much metal if you if you grind through into the water jacket or something then you know you might as well throw the head away you've done all that for nothing so um, if you're going to do this, uh, what I use is, and there are tools specifically meant for this, there are kits and, and sanding, dot, sanding attachments and all specifically meant for porting and polishing. Um, but once again, because I'm poor and I don't have sponsors, uh -huh, I use a Dremel and uh, sanding drums and different size stones. Now you'll find uh, different things that will work better for you in certain circumstances on different heads because not everybody's going to be doing a Jeep 4 liter head. Uh, but just find what works best for you and make sure that if you are going to go deep in here, uh, which you need to do the whole thing, take the valves out first. Um, I was doing it preemptively without removing all the valves because I can't get all the way down and actually hit the valves with that right there. Um, so what you've got to do is remove the valves and then go from the, the inside of the head to get the rest of it. Uh, anyway, uh, not sure what else I can tell you about this head right now. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I never stop watching and answering questions on my videos. I don't care if it's a year old or five years old. If you answer, uh, ask a question on my videos in the comments and it's still a relevant question, uh, I have no problem going back and answering. I'm always willing to help you guys. Uh, if you found the video helpful, please hit the like button down there, subscribe, and uh, feel free to share with all your friends. Thank you, and uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.